Hello and welcome to Enrich Financial Solution. Today we're going to look into a major economic crisis we as a nation are facing. Yes Bank is in the minds of every individual today across the nation because of the financial crisis we are going through for the past few months and especially leading to panic and chaos among the depositors of Yes Bank. The questions that race in our minds are is the money safe with Yes Bank? What is RBI and the government doing to give assurance for our money with the banks? Well, it is indeed a huge blow to the Indian banking sector today. In fact, this is a second major instance with the RBI which is superseding another major bank within a span of 1 year. Previously, PMC, which is Punjab and Maharashtra Cooperative Bank, has been facing regulatory actions against certain loan accounts. In fact, the PMC scam victims have also expressed their disappointment uh, with the government and the RBI because of the lack of assurance that was given to them. In fact, uh, Yes Bank is the fifth largest private sector bank in India, and because of the crisis, RBI has imposed a moratorium of one month, capping a withdrawal, a daily limit of withdrawal of rupees fifty thousand. and this issue affects current account holders and also small business groups that deal in one or two accounts now let's look into the national stock exchange circular national stock exchange in its circular said that no future and options contracts shall be available in the yes bank for trading in equity derivative segment from may 29 2020 onwards The existing future and options contracts across all expiries shall expire on May 28, 2020. In fact, the finance minister uh, Nirmala Sitharaman has announced that both SBI and LIC have expressed their interest in bailing out Yes Bank out of this crisis. And this probably is the first time state-owned lenders are coming forward to bail out new generation private bank this is a major intervention made by the rbi as far as the private banking sector is concerned in fact in 2004 oriental bank of commerce was asked to take over a private lender in order to bring out of crisis situation former chief financial officer of sbi prashant kumar has been appointed as the administrator of yes bank due to this crisis and from march 27 2020 the bank will no longer be a part of nifty basket of shares the private sector lender will exit the benchmark index and will be replaced by shri cement according to the statement by the boards now let's look into the financial crisis and the loan crisis in a simple layman's term for example if you take a small amount of loan say 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs It is a responsibility as individuals to repay that loan periodically. However, if the bank lends a huge amount, say like 50 crores or 100 crores or in this case over 1000 crores, it is the responsibility of the bank, the officials of the bank and the employees within to monitor the system periodically so that they can recover the amount at the right time. Unfortunately what happens is when there is corruption within the four walls of the banks when the employees and the officials are corrupted and when there is a question of bribe and influence without any validation of proper documents then the bank faces a huge financial blow because these companies and persons who take the huge amount become defaulters at the end in fact it's not yes just yes bank that has become a defaulter in the previous years we can see that nirav modi vijay malia ruchi soya have all become willful defaulters in fact rbi has listed out around 30 major defaulters in may 2019 some of the famous well known defaulters were gitanjali gems rotomag global zoom developers deccan chronicles Kudos Chemi, Kingfisher Airlines, Gilly India, KS Oils, First Leasing Company of India and so on as you can see in the list mentioned in the chart. In fact there are six major reasons that RBI has cited out for the collapse of Yes Bank. 
let's look into the six major reasons. The first is deterioration of financial position. The financial position of Yes Bank has undergone a very steady decline over the last few years because of the inability to raise capital to address potential loan losses. In fact, the bank was making losses and inadequate profits in the last four quarters. The second issue, major issue, was with governance. The bank has experienced serious governance issues and practices in recent years, which has led to a steady decline of the bank. Third, we can see its false assurance of raising capital given by the bank. Four in five deals with no serious investors in sight and no market-led revival in sight. And finally, this is one of the major reasons of the downfall or collapse of any bank, outflow of liquidity. The bank was facing regular outflow of liquidity. It means that the bank was witnessing withdrawals of deposits from customers. Now, what we as a commoner must understand that deposits are the bread and butter of any bank. No deposits, no banking system. So this outflow of liquidity caused a major collapse in the Yes Bank. Yes Bank also gave several loans to uh, companies like Cox and Kings, as you can see in the chart, Cafe Coffee Day, Altico, Vodafone, ILF and S, DHFL, and the Anil Ambani Group. Okay, now these companies led to the bad debt because these companies were unable to repay the amount taken by the banks. Hence, it was a huge financial blow to Yes Bank as a whole. However, Nirmala Sitharaman, the finance minister, has said that RBI has been closely monitoring the situation. In fact, it has been monitoring Yes Bank since 2018, and RBI has also assured financial stability. Unfortunately, the truth is there are a lot of loopholes in our rules and regulations. And there are some worrying trends, as we can see in the chart, from 2013 to 2020. If we look at the chart, from 2013 to 2014, the cases filed were 10,171 crore rupees. In 2014, it went up to 19,455 crore rupees. However, if you see, there is a huge and massive increase in the cases filed from 2017 to 2019. It rose from 41,167 crore rupees to 95,000 crore rupees, which is indeed a huge rise in the fraud cases. I would like to conclude with my remarks that according to Digital India, the money is deposited with the banks instead of having it as liquid cash. In fact, the banks advise us to keep our money with the banks. Unfortunately, with the current economic scenario, what is the trust that we as laymen would have on the banks? In fact, this scenario will eventually make many banks to go bankrupt and many banks would eventually merge together. In fact, recently 21 banks are being merged to 12 banks. So what is the current scenario? It's a question that we as citizens of India must raise to the government and to the RBI. I would also like to invite the viewers who have a fair knowledge about the economic crisis of India and those working in the banking sector to come forward with your opinions and your ideas and raise awareness of this economic crisis so that our future generation can be secure. Sharing facts and raising awareness of the current affairs is what we do. Please do subscribe for further input in the future. This is Nancy Xavier signing off from Enrich Financial Solution. Thank you.